Hey everybody, thanks for joining today's NTOP Live about advanced lattice design for orthopedic implants. Um, today's session will be a deeper dive into the lattice design capabilities that one might leverage when designing for orthopedics. Now, this is a follow-up to our last NTOP Live on the classic orthopedic implant design workflow. Um, so if you haven't seen that yet, you can definitely find that at our Entopology YouTube channel or at entopology.com slash videos. Uh, it's not a prerequisite that one see that end top live before watching this one, but if you have an interest in designing implantable orthopedic devices and osseo integrative lattices, that is definitely another insightful video to watch. As a primer to what I'll be showing next, um, I have pulled up this acetabular cup right over here, uh, which is one of the components used in a hip replacement surgery and has been one of the forefront orthopedic devices is seeing a lot of exposure in the additive world. Uh, designing osseo-integrative lattice structures for a device like this is actually pretty easy and trivial for NTOP platform um, as the implicit modeling design strategy allows us to select this lattice design space right over here and simply populate it with a randomized lattice structure. Um, if this is simply what you're looking for, you're, you're basically as good as done. Um, however, there are can be a variety of reasons why you would want to modify this lattice structure further. Um, perhaps you're looking to address a specific need or add a particular characteristic or just better define your product in the market as a unique solution. Uh, regardless, Entel Platform offers quite an array of capabilities that can really make an impact uh, on the end result as well as the design workflow itself. So looking at this beam-based lattice structure, uh, one of the things that we can do is manipulate the structure itself. Uh, not necessarily in the sense of the thickness of the beam, though we can't do that, um, but rather a manipulation of the individual beam themselves. So in this example, uh, where I have a small segment of lattice here, um, we can see that the beams are quite random and quite scattered, uh, with the beams closer to the edge uh, being open and truncated, right, trimmed down to this square shape. Um, if we so desired, we can actually extend these edge beams so that they can be longer. Uh, some designers might appreciate this capability because it actually enables a more uh, macroscopic surface roughness in addition to the texture that a randomized lattice might inherently provide. So as I flash on these lattice beams here, you can see that the gray beams are essentially an extension of the existing blue ones. At the same time, there are circumstances and applications where having these open or extended beams, uh, they might prove to be problematic. In the case where the desired beam thickness is on the smaller side of things, right, a smaller diameter, having a standalone beam might actually prove risky in the testing process. Um, as it could be sheared off during abrasion testing, uh, and that would indicate it could break off inside of the human body. To kind of prevent this, um, NTOP platform also offers the ability to remove any and all open beams, right? So looking at the structure now, it can be seen that uh, all the beams are now connected on each side, ensuring that no single beam acts like a cantilever and can be snapped off. Um, there's many different ways uh, you can design a lattice structure in NTOP where it, it naturally does not have any of these open beams to begin with at all. Um, but depending on the approach and design strategy and preference, there is no one size fits all solution for this kind of design process. So simply offering uh, med device designers the ability to, to kind of tweak their lattice structures and beams however they see fit, it really empowers them to create uh, even better and more desirable uh, unique solutions. If you are a uh, close follower of Entopology, uh, you may know that one of the features that we love to talk about is gradients. Our field-driven design process allows gradients to be easily implemented into geometry uh, that would normally be very difficult to modify in this way. Uh, lattice design for orthopedics is no exception. So over here, we can see that we've simply got two sides and a randomized lattice structure in between. This is functionally the same as what we saw on the acetabular cup. Um, however, with a little bit of nudging uh, using our gradient design capabilities, we can actually use these sides, 
these solid regions over here as reference points and introduce a gradient into the pore size of the structure. Now you can see that as we get closer to the size now, the pore size decreases and the overall density gets tighter. Uh, this implementation is essentially a function of distance. So we can say that as we get further away from these sides towards the center, that pore size is expected to increase and the lattice structure as a whole becomes less dense. Um, now it's not just the pore sizes of a beam lattice that we can grade. The same methodology would apply if we were to use the reference geometry on a different lattice characteristic entirely, um, perhaps even on a different lattice on its own. So if you look at this gyroid lattice, we can see that this example has uniformity to it, right? It's got consistent thickness, consistent cell size, um, but this lower example actually has a variant thickness. As you get closer to those sides, the walls of the gyroid themselves become thicker and thicker. The implications here are, are pretty profound in, this, in the sense that the design strategy that we see in these examples are not very limited. Um, as long as a characteristic or parameter of something we design in NTOP can accept this field-driven or data-driven input, uh, we can seamlessly introduce this kind of gradient. And that's kind of one of the great beauties of implicit modeling uh, in this design environment is that you can integrate this gradient however you see fit. From, from a geometric perspective, um, these are all really interesting and complex structures on screen. Uh, but the fact remains that there needs to be some semblance of viability when attempting to actually send these designs to a machine for additive production. In the world of 3D printing, where it's you know either extrusion process or some kind of laser curing process or a sintered powder process, the, the great equalizer of the production process itself inevitably comes down to an STL. Uh, though NTOP can we can output image stacks and slice layers, uh, the ubiquity of mesh-based STLs can't exactly be ignored. Um, thus the question becomes, how does one generate a mesh when your design and your lattice structures are so complex and how do we generate this mesh in an effective way? Um, as one might guess when it comes to NTOP, uh, gradients can really play a significant role. This top example here um, is actually a geometric average between a gyroid structure and a solid block, uh, right? It's more solid on the left and more of a gyroid on the right side. So it's pretty complex stuff with a lot of deep and interesting contours that need to be captured. So to actually make sure we capture these details, uh, it makes sense to make the mesh triangles be extremely small, just to ensure that you're retaining all of those details. Um, but if you take a, you know, take a peek at this mesh, you can only imagine how big this file size is actually going to be, right? This huge number of triangles will translate to a fairly significant file size. So maybe there's a way to simplify this mesh while still retaining the essence of this geometry and its many contours, right? And this mesh right over here does do that by creating consistently sized triangles um, we're going to see that they are significantly larger than before, but still manage to capture the general shape of the gyroid lattice. Um, you know, this is a good solution, but we don't necessarily have to settle on this mesh. Um, to some designers, this level of fidelity on the right side actually isn't sufficient, and they really need to capture the, you know, the organic shape, uh, the contours of the gyroid as closely as possible. So now it becomes um, wondering if there is a middle ground, right? And, you know, as you might expect, the gradient control um, introduced here is going to, you know, absolutely give you that capability. And that takes on the form of this triangle size control, right? The gradient here is that you're actually controlling the size of the triangles as you go from left to right. So over on the left, you can see uh, where the geometry is more, more of that solid block region and it's more planar and flat. Uh, the larger triangles dominate this region. But as you go further to the right and the contours become steeper and more pronounced, the triangles themselves become smaller. It's almost as if they accommodate this geometric transition as it happens. If we were to look at the numbers themselves, uh, the original mesh right over here had over 200,000 triangles. And with the simplest variant, this second one here, we had almost 9,000. 
um, you know, with the gradient control, however, we, we brought that count from 9,000 back up to 26,000, but we did a much better job capturing the detail only where it's needed the most. And even then, we're still at an order of magnitude smaller than this original mesh triangle count. Um, you know, whether it be design or the output itself, end top platform, it offers a variety of ways to control aspects of your osseo integrative lattice design process uh, that just hasn't been seen before. And obviously what I've shown here today is not really intended to be a, you know, like a be all and end all solution when it comes to designing osseo integrative lattices uh, for your medical devices. There are many ways to go about this within NTOP itself. And this is merely a few examples on how to explore and leverage those capabilities. Um, but today, this has just been a showcase of what NTOP can offer as a design platform to create these orthopedic design solutions that work for your specific parts and your specific product lines.